Pung kalagitnaan, truly you are in our midst, and that your promise and make tabernacle in us. You made our body, our spirit, soul, and body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This morning, I just like to uh, recognize our ating pong mga nasa Zoom, Sister Aurora. Uh, we have Jess, Sister Mimi. Sister Pinay, Brother Bic, and uh, Sister Gia. We also have from um, sa ating pong uh, um, Facebook Live, we have Sister Irene, Sister Gia, Sister Lailani, um, uh, Sister Celia, G. Hazel, Herrera, Franz, Jonathan Asio. Uh, we have Knight, Sister Knight Saidin, Sister Carol Vallejo, and Sister Carol Abendanyo. Okay, so tayo po ay uh, magpapatuloy sa ating pong uh, pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. And um, yeah. Okay, the title of the message this morning is being filled by the Holy Spirit to be judges in the spirit realm or in the courts of heaven. Some of you will ask this question. I thought there is only one judge. Okay, I thought it is only God the Father who is the judge in the court. Okay, but this morning we're going to see in the scripture now. There are mortal beings that is being summoned to be part of a part of the bench, or we call it sa America, meron silang tinatawag na jury. The jury is composed of people who sit as judge. They are the one who makes decision sa mga hearing na ginagawa nila. They're being guided by the judge itself. Okay? But there are jury. Now, it seems like ganyan din po sa langit na meron pong mga kinokol si Lord to be part of this bench or part of this quote-unquote uh, quote jury. Okay? So, but before we talk about that, uh, operating as a judge in the courts of heaven, let us understand that the first requirements is you need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Because in John chapter 3, verse 3 says that unless a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, not about going to heaven when he died. Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus how to operate in the realm of the spirit. While he was alive here on earth, you can uh, flow or enter in the realm of the spirit. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng John chapter 3, verse 2, 5. Now, in Romans 6, uh, Romans 8, verse 26, sabi niya, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself make intercession, intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So it is the person of the Holy Spirit who shows us how to pray. Maliwanag po yan. When we pray, it should be the Holy Spirit that is in us is the one that is praying. It helps us. Okay? So in the court of heaven, He is what we call our legal aid. He is our helper. He helped us. 
ok in John 14 verse 26 and Sabiron the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all things that I sent to you so that's why it is important that Jesus has to leave the earth so that the Spirit can come and the Spirit dwells in us Sabi niya, he abides in us forever. Because in the Old Testament, there is no permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But in the New Testament, when Jesus died, after Jesus died on the cross, and rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to us. Okay? He will teach us all things. So, meron ka lang helper, meron ka pang teacher. The word helper in the Greek word is parakletos. Okay? It means a comporter or an advocate. So Jesus is an advocate. The Holy Spirit is also what? An advocate. That's what the Bible says. Because an advocate is someone in a legal system who speak on our behalf. Hmm. Siya ang iyong abogado. Okay? Ang yun ang ibig sabihin ng advocate or a defense lawyer. So the same word is used to describe Jesus' function in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. Ano sabi ron, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is not referring to the to the unbeliever he is referring to the christians this letter of first john and second john is about the believers kasi nung tayo na born again the lord has forgiven forgave our sins okay and has given us eternal life but the problem is we continuously commit sin kaya sabi niya i write this thing to you that you may not sin but if anyone sins oh you have an advocate. So the good thing is, uh, yung sin kasi ay merong consequence. Ang kasalanan ay may bayad, may kabayaran, may consequence ang kasalanan. And God doesn't, doesn't want us to experience the consequence of sin. That's why He provided a court system in heaven wherein every time we commit sin and the enemy accuses us, we can plead guilty and God can forgive us through the blood of Jesus. The word advocate is also the Greek word parakletos. So this is the same word used to describe the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is standing as our advocate. So it's still a mystery. How does thing happen? If Jesus is the advocate, sometimes he can be what? A, uh, what do we call that? An accuser or... Uh, a judge, sometimes he can be a witness, okay? So the Holy Spirit is taking all that Jesus has done and is doing and is doing and is functionally applying it to our lives. Okay, so lahat ng ginawa ni Jesus ay ina-apply sa atin ngayon. Same true, kaya sabi niya, he will put into remembrance everything that Jesus spoke when he was here on earth. Kaya ang, ang bilin ni Lord, the Holy Spirit will not speak for himself, but the Holy Spirit will speak what I have told him to speak. Okay? So he is helping us to know how to pray according to the will of God. Because if kung tayo lang magpipray sa sarili natin, we will never knew what is the will of God. Only the Spirit that is within us can understand it that can understand the things of the Spirit. In fact, is praying through us in agreement with God's passion. So when we pray, the Holy Spirit pray through us. Okay? So when the Holy Spirit empowers our prayer, He gave us the wisdom to know how to plead our case in the courts of heaven. That's why still when you make a petition, you still need to be uh, led by the Spirit. Hindi ito certain na uh, uh, something lang na 
bunga lang ng iyong kaisipan. You need to have the Spirit of God guiding you in making a petition and even to the point of speaking to the courts of heaven, the Spirit of God will guide you. The Bible says the Spirit empower us to pray in the Spirit or in tongues. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 tells us that when we speak in tongues, we are speaking to God. For he who speak in tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, however, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. So, mahalaga na tayo ay ano, nabaptize ng Holy Spirit and the Lord we spoke in tongues because that is the Spirit praying to God. Okay? So, we speak mysteries. Now, our prayer language or tongues releases mysteries. We know by faith, however, that we are praying according to the will of God. That's why when you speak in tongues, you know by faith that you are what? Praying according to the will of God. And the word mysteries in Greek is mosterion. Nang ibig sabihin, to shut the mouth such as silence imposed on those initiated into a religious rite. Kaya, mapapansin mo, when we speak in tongue, it is not you that's speaking, but it is the spirit that is inside of you is the one that is speaking. So it's really a mystery. Actually, they conduct a study on this about the speaking in tongues. They found out that the brain uh, is not functioning when you speak in tongues. So, what is the one that is functioning? You can conclude now that this is what? The spirit of man. So, we are granted entrance, you speak in tongues, you are granted entrance into a spiritual dimension through our prayer language. Kaya, it is advisable that when you pray, you have to learn or you have to practice speaking in tongues. Our prayer language allow us to move into this realm of the Spirit where others are not allowed. Hmm. Napakagandang gift na binigay sa atin ni Lord. Wherein you can pray in the realm of the Spirit. Okay? It is for those who have received the infilling of the Holy Spirit in pray in tongues. Tandaan niyo po sa Bible, it is not the Spirit that would speak. It is us that would speak. But they will give us, the Spirit will give us utterance. Uh, the utterance will be coming from the Spirit of God and then you speak. Okay? So this secret place in the Spirit or the realm of the Spirit can involve the course of heaven. Okay? Malaki po ang langit. Okay? And one of the places in heaven is what we call the courts of heaven. Okay? Romans 8.23, not only that, but we also have the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. See? Our spirit is groaning. Okay? It's part of uh, before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The adoption or the redemption of our body signifies the day of resurrection when the dead in Christ shall rise. O, makikita natin yan sa 1 Thessalonians 4.16. This is the second coming. So, there is a groaning that is necessary to birth the coming of the Lord and the resurrection of the dead. That's why the Lord wants us to pray. That's why when we pray, sabi on Romans 8.26, that our spirit groans, we travail, Meron tayong, para tayong buntis na may ipinapanganak. Okay? Groanings that cannot be uttered. Okay? So, the Holy Spirit operates as our legal aid in the courts of heaven by granting us wisdom and understanding from which we can pray. Because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot know what the courts of heaven is requiring of us. 
how are we going to come to the Father or to our judge? What are we going to say before the, before the judge? So you need what? The Holy Spirit. We must have this knowledge to present our cases to the courts of heaven effectively. Without this knowledge, we cannot present the case. Okay? Look at Ephesians 1, 15 to 17. Therefore also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. So without that spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of Him, we will never knew God, okay? Because the things that God deposited in us can only be understood by what? By the Spirit of God. So we must, we must have this if we are to be effective in the courts of heaven. We need this spirit of wisdom. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 to 15. For if I pray in tongue, my spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. Notice that Paul prayed first in the Spirit, then in his understanding. So it was praying in the Spirit that opened his what? Understanding. That's why when you come to God in prayer, we advise that you pray in tongue first before you pray with understanding. Because when we pray in the Spirit, it will open our understanding of what God wants you to offer before the Lord at that very moment. Because prayer is not a religious thing na sasabihin, sasabihin mo lang o parang mga nakasulat lang na prayer na sasabi na i-recite mo lang. No, that's not prayer is all about. It was only once he understand the spirit that he could logically and intellectually present his case in the courts of heaven. So after praying in the spirit, that's the only time he can logically and intellectually present his case. Kaya pag may nagtatanong sa akin, ano ba sasabihin ko, Pastor, doon kay Lord? You have to be led by the spirit. Oh, that's why you have to prepare. So if you're going to make some petition before the court, what you need to do is what? You need to do what we call judicial inquiry. Judicial, judicial inquiry is the term that we only coin. Okay? Nang ibig sabihin lang yan is to seek God. To hear from God. Yun lang ang ibig sabihin nun. So, we just coined that terminology para lang maging, uh, quote-unquote, maging legal term. You, you, you seek the Lord. You ask the Lord. Ano ba ang gusto mong ipetisyon ko? And how I'm going to express this petition? So it is a legal issue in the spirit that is being used by the enemy to stop the promise. Tandaan niyo po, the issue, the legal issue against us, it's either personal sin or it is a sin by our forefathers or the enemy has a legal right doon sa inihingi natin, yun ang ginagamit niya para ma-stop yung flow ng blessing at ng promise towards us. So this has been the major issue we had to contend with the courts of heaven to unlock the destiny God has given us. Kasi if we will not understand the major issues na ibinabato sa atin ng kawal, very ironic, siya ang nagtutukso sa atin at pag tayo natukso at ginawa yung kasalanan, siya rin ang mag sa atin. So that's how the enemy... Uh, ganun siya katuso. Okay? So, we need to understand it through the Holy Spirit. That's why in Revelation 12.10, sabi niya, Salvation is strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ. We have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God, day and night, has been cast out. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, hindi pa ito nangyayari. That's why, the enemy is still there, accusing us day and night. But time will come, he will be cast down here on earth. 
Okay? So, we know the meaning of the accuser. In Greek word is kategorus, and it means to be a complainant at law or in a legal system. In a legal system, there is always a complainant. There is always a prosecutor. There is no judge when his right mind na hindi siya mag... Uh, na wala siyang prosecutor doon sa kanyang legal system. Kailangan yun. Okay? Para yung justice ay maserve. Okay? It means to stand against someone in an assembly. In heaven, there is a divine council, an assembly. Okay? And this assembly is in the court. Why I said it is in the court? Because God seated as a judge. Okay? So the accuser is speaking against us in the courts of heaven where verdicts are rendered. So itong accuser natin, masipag ito. Araw at gabi. Di ba sabi ron? Before our God. So, saan ka lang pwedeng akusahan? There is only one way or oh, one place. That is in a court. Okay? In Isaiah 54, 17, ano sabi ron? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So, if you want to remove the weapon and not allow it to prosper, we must silence the tongue. Every tongue which, again, which rises against us in judgment, ang ibig sabihin niyan, accusation. And that accusation is being thrown against us in the courts of heaven. So this verse declare that the right to silence the tongues is our heritage and our righteousness from the Lord. So how can you uh, silence the tongues of the accuser? It is only when you agree with this accusation and plead the blood of the Lamb. Kaya nga in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, Jesus said, when the enemy accuses you, you need to agree. In a court of, in an in a earthly court, when someone accuses you, what do you do? You bring a witness and you argue. But in the courts of heaven, when the enemy accuses you, you agree. You just say, yes, Lord, I am guilty. So we have the right to stand before him and undo and condemn every voice against us. So, sinasabi dun sa Isaiah 54, we have the right to stand. Ang tawag doon ni Paul is legal standing. Meron kang karapatang tumayo. Bakit? You are a citizen of heaven. If you are a citizen of heaven, you have a legal right na pumunta sa korte at humingi ng hustisya. Parang dito sa Pilipinas, oh, may korte. Ang purpose ng korte para mabigyan ka ng ano, hustisya. Oh. But the problem is because a lot of people are ignorant of the justice system in the Philippines, they just put the matters into their own hands. O di kaya, pupunta sila doon sa kangaroo court ng NPA, doon sila magsumbong. Di ba? Which is wrong. So if you want real justice, you go to the court. Doon ka mag-file. Same true in heaven. Because it is illegal to take matters into your own hands. Illegal yun. Okay? So we are accepted and permitted to stand in the courts of heaven and silence words of accusation against us. And the only way we can silence the, the words of accusation against us is by admitting it. Because every time the enemy make accuses with us in the courts of heaven, Totoo yun. Hindi siya pwedeng magsinungaling sa harapan ng judge. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya ang gagawin mo lang, aaminin mo. Like for example, the accusation of Korah against Moses. Remember this one? 
In Numbers chapter 16, ang sabi ni Korah, Moreover, you have not brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey. So, Korah is accusing Moses of, oh, hindi mo pa nga tinutupad yung pangako mo that you're going to bring us to the land flowing with milk and honey, nor given inheritance of fields and vineyards. And then, will you put out the eyes of this man? We will not come up, sabi niya ganun. And then, on the following verses, ang sabi niya, Then Moses was very angry. And he said to the Lord, Do not respect their offering. Nagsumbong siya kay Lord eh. I have not taken one donkey from them, nor I have hurt one of them. So Korah is accusing Moses of not doing what he had promised. Okay? He state that he has taken, sabi naman ni, ano, ni Moses, he state that he has taken nothing from them. And he declares the accusation that is Sabi niya, wala akong kinukuha sa kanila. Oh. So Moses is speaking these things before the courts of heaven. Okay? So what happened? The Lord releases what? Judgment. Okay? Against Korah. Di ba? And Moses prayed that the earth would open and swallow them. Okay? So the Holy Spirit also was operating as our legal aid. He was functioning as our advocate and helping us navigate the spirit dimension. Malawak po ang spiritual dimension. Ang realm of the spirit malawak. That's why walang magkakaparehas na mga description ang mga believer tungkol sa langit. Why? You cannot just claim na ganito lang itsura ng langit. Why? Because heaven is so big. Okay? Hindi kayang i-comprehend yan ng ating mga ano, logical mind. So it is virtually impossible to be effective in the courts of heaven without the spirit power, without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why going to the courts of heaven, most of the time, you ask the aid of the seven spirit of God. Diba? So as we practice praying in the spirit, we learn more about how to pray from this realm. Kaya ang advice, when you enter the courts of heaven, you pray in the spirit. Then later, God will give you a logical understanding of what you're going to speak in with understanding. So this is one of the main functions of praying in tongues. So that you can understand the realm of the Spirit. Now, we need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. Because praying in tongues is a result of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Remember in Acts 24, 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So to be able to pray in tongues and have our understanding open to perceive the spiritual reality, we must be filled or baptized in the Holy Spirit. Kaya mahalaga ito na ikaw ay mabaptize ng Holy Spirit. At kapag nabaptize ka ng Holy Spirit and you're speaking in tongues, you have to practice it. You have to use that gift that God has given you. So this is the term John the Baptist used to describe what Jesus do for those who believe in Him. Diba? They will speak with new tongues. Sabi niya, I do not know Him, but He who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on Him, this is He who baptized with the Holy Spirit. Remember, si John at si Jesus ay magpinsan. Panganay lang ng ilang buwan siguro itong si John, the beloved, o John the Baptist. So, I believe, nung mga bata pa sila, magkalaro ang mga ito. Magkakilala sila. Tama? At kailan lang na-recognize ni John the Baptist, si Jesus, that He is the Messiah. When the Spirit descending and remaining on Him. Kaya nung lumapit siya, sabi niya, Lord, I'm not worthy na bautismuhan ka. Di ba? Parang, sinasabi nung, bakit di mo sinabi sa akin? <laughs> Matagal na tayong magmagkalaro, ikaw pala yung misiyas. Oh. Di ba? 
It is only the time when babautismuhan na niya si Jesus, doon lang nag-descend yung spirit sa kanya. Doon lang niya na-recognize si Jesus. Same true with us. Without the Spirit of God, we will never knew about God or the things about God or the purpose of God in our life and in, in our nations. Hindi natin maintindihan yun. Di ba? Remember, this, the Word of God is Spirit and it gives life. Without the Spirit of God in us, we cannot understand the Word. Okay? So, same true with John the, ba John the Baptist. Nakilala lang niya si Jesus when the Spirit descended upon Jesus. So, to be baptized means to be immersed or submerged. In other words, just like water cover us in baptism, so the Spirit cover us as well. So, di ba, nilulubog tayo sa tubig when we are water baptized? Di ba, immersion ang tawag doon. Same to with the Spirit of God. When we were baptized in the Spirit, we were immersed in the realm of the Spirit. Okay? So the Holy Spirit takes absolute control of us and we must be under His complete authority. That's why ang bili ni, Lord, ni Paul sa atin, walk in the Spirit. So for you not to fulfill the, the desire of the flesh, the solution is only what? You need to walk in the Spirit. Okay? Jesus is the one who baptized us or fill us with His Spirit. And God gave the Spirit to Jesus to pour out on us as a result of all He did. Because He died on the cross of Calvary, because of all those things that He did, the Spirit can now come upon us freely. <clears throat> Acts 2.23, ano sabi niya? Therefore, be exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. So the Father has promised to us that He's going to give us the Holy Spirit. Okay? So it is the passion of Jesus to empower His followers with the Spirit. And the Father gave the Holy Spirit to Jesus to give to those who belong to Him. Yun yung reason on. When the Holy Spirit come upon us, there is an unction or anointing from which we can pray. So, gusto ng Father that we need to be filled by the Spirit of God. Not only be filled with the Holy Spirit of God that we can walk by the Holy Spirit. Kaya sabi niya, I will be strengthened to pray out of a prophetic unction birthed by the Holy Spirit. That's why you can see the realm of the Spirit. You can hear the voice of God. You can even pray prophetically. It's because of what? The unction of the, of the Holy Spirit that is inside of you. Jesus desires to baptize any and all in the Holy Spirit. His work on the cross, His resurrection, ascension, and position at the right hand of the Father is so we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we know that Jesus is already seated in the right hand of the Father? When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciple, it was the sign that Jesus had reached heaven and was seated at God's right hand as Lord of all. Sabi ng mga scientists, if Jesus ascended to heaven by the speed of light, ang sabi ng mga scientists, up to now, he is still traveling. You see? And how do we know that Jesus is already in heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father? When the Holy Spirit come upon the disciple during the, the first century Christians in the, in, in the Pentecost, that is a sign where Jesus is what? already seated in the right hand of the Father because He said, if I will not leave, the Spirit cannot come. So, when the Spirit of God come upon us, He is already is a sign that He is already seated at the right hand of the Father. So, in Acts 2, Sabiron, this Jesus God has raised us up, raised up, 
of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemy your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the God has made this Jesus, whom you crucif crucified, both Lord and Christ. So they knew Jesus was seated at the, in the Father's right hand because the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit had now come. So yun ang sign na si Jesus ay nakaupo na sa kanang kamay ng Ama because the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon us. So the Holy Spirit had come to declare the Lordship and the authority of Jesus on earth. So He came to empower the disciples to be witnesses that God had raised Jesus up and seated Him at His right hand. So ang ating uh, gawain ay magpatotoo, witness. Oh, when the Holy Spirit fills us, we too become what? Empowered. That's why we can raise the dead, we can heal the sick, we can cast out demons. So we can pray prayers that release the kingdom on earth. Okay, di ba sabi niya, this is the way you pray. Come thy kingdom, be done your will on earth as it is in heaven. So it is only because of the Holy Spirit. Not because of your, not because you pray hard. Di ba madalas sinasabi nung iba, pag yung hinihingi natin ay hindi pa dumarating, anong sinasabi natin? You pray hard. But that's wrong. There's no such thing as praying hard. Because the answer of prayer doesn't depend on us, on how we pray. Oh. The answer comes from the sovereignty of our God. Di ba? Our empowerment by the Spirit moves us into the realms of prayer that produces breakthrough. So, si Lord pa rin ang gumagawa noon. So, as you pray, believe that the anointing of the Spirit will come. And as you pray, you open your mouth and begin to speak in a language that you haven't learned in the natural. You speak in tongues. Because Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow river of waters. Oh. That's why the words that you're releasing is what? It's a spirit. Sometimes kahit nakikipagkwentuhan ka lang, yung kausap mo, he start to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? When you speak the spirit, the words that you're speaking is alive. Okay? And nagbiminister ito sa mga tao. Nakuha niyo? Kaya you cannot underestimate what the Holy Spirit can do to you. It doesn't matter if you're not a pastor or just ordinary believer. I tell you, in these last days, ang move na gagamitin ni Lord, before there is the move of the fivefold ministry, this is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastors, the teachers. In these last days, Actually, ang trabaho ng lima is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. It's still the saints ang gagawa. Ang trabaho lang namin is to equip you. Oh. But the problem is, in the past, yung fivefold ministry, sila yung nasa front line. Sila yung parang sikat. Sila yung gumagawa. Pero sabi niya mali, Ang trabaho natin is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Okay. We equip them and we send them, commission them to do the work of the ministry. Okay. So, every time you speak, there is power on that word. Okay. So the Holy Spirit will, will ignite deep in your spirit a flow that will rush out when you open your mouth. That's why sasabihin ng kausap mo, bakit ganyan pagkausap kita ang uh, I have that peace? 
you have the, they have they can experience shalom. Shalom means nothing missing, nothing nothing is broken. That is shalom, peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. So let the tongues and language of the spirit flow through you. That's why when you pray, practice praying in the spirit. Okay? Now, if you know how to, uh, and you know how to uh, pray in the spirit, and you've been practicing it, there is a, what we call, passing of authority. God will give you authority to operate as a judge in his court. There will come a time, ipopromote ka ni Lord to operate as a judge in the courts of heaven. It's just like a jury. Okay? Most Christians would say that God is only the judge. But God allow us to operate as judges in the realm of the Spirit as well. Okay? In fact, the whole idea of decrease and declaration emerges from this concept. Judges are those are whose words change the course of events. Sila yung nag-re-release ng mga decrease. Okay? Judges in the natural decrease, declare, and verdicts set things in motion that wouldn't otherwise happen. In the earthly court, Walang pwedeng makulong hanggat walang um, order ang court. Di ba? Hindi pwede siyang ikulong ang sino mang tao na walang order ang court. So in Job chapter 22, verse 27 to 28, ang sabi ron, You will make your prayer to him, he will hear you, and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. Tilan po, you will also declare a thing. In other words, our words in the spirit, in the spirit realm, cause something to happen in the natural realm. Because sabi ni Lord, life and death is in the power of the tongue. This can be because we are sitting as judges in this dimension. I'm not saying that all of us will be, it is only the Lord can know, can promote you to sit as judges in His court. Okay? So, kinakailangan mo na masanay ka kung paano ka lalapit sa Kanya, paano maging dependent at petitioner. So, pag most frequent mo na itong ginagawa, I believe mag increase ang yung jurisdiction and time will come, ikaw ay paupuin ni Lord as one of the judges doon sa kanyang court. Paano ko nasabi? Remember in 1 Samuel chapter 8, nag-request ang Israel ng, ng king. Tandaan nyo po, it is Hindi king ang design ni Lord. Ang design ni Lord ay ano? Judges. Sabi no, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like than all the nations, that our king, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. So, from the beginning, gusto ni Lord judge lang. Pero nag-insist ang Israel na bigyan sila ng hari. That's why, ang sabi sa kanila ni, ni Lord, sabi ni Lord kay Samuel, protest solemnly. Because Samuel was the last judge ng Israel. Okay?
And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he repeated them in hearing of the Lord. So the Lord said to us, Samuel, heed their voice and make them a king. Oh, eventually the Lord said, oh, sige, bigyan mo sila ng king. Okay? So, in Isaiah 126, ano ang promise ni Lord? I will restore your judges as the first and your counselors at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Because when Jerusalem was full of wickedness and sin, God's way to fix it was reinstituting judges. Kaya nga, after Exodus, the Pentateuch, ang sumunod ay yung judges. Nag-appoint si Lord ng mga ano, judges na mag rule sa kanila. And the promise of God to Israel, i-restore niya itong mga judges na ito. So, judges is called to fix. Okay? And this is the power of judges. Righteous judges can bring order and peace back into place. Yun ang trabaho ng mga judge. Magano, mag-restore ng order. Okay? And this is true in the natural, but also true in the spiritual. So we need righteous and just judge in the natural, but we also need them in the spirit to set things in divine order to, through decrees and declarations. Because when God appointed you to become one of His judges there in the realm of the Spirit, in Psalm 149 says, ang, ang ating inheritance is what? Is to execute judgment against the enemy. Okay? Binigyan din tayo ng Lord ng ano? Rulership. Okay? Look at Luke 22, 28. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Nakita nyo? Gusto ni Lord na ano? For us to sit as a judge. We see Jesus promising his apostle, position as judges. And I personally do not believe that it is just in the afterlife. Hindi ito pag namatay na tayo. But I believe Jesus was speaking in the spiritual dimension right now. That's why pansin niyo sabi ng Ephesians chapter 2, 6 to 8, that we were raised up and seated at the right hand of the Father. Seated in Christ in the realm of the Spirit. So tell me, what is the purpose of sitting in a throne. Di ba? To rule and reign. So basically, even though our feet are on the ground here on earth, you are seated with Christ in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit. So he was promising them, the 12 apostles, that because of their faithfulness, they would operate as judges. And this is what Peter did in Acts 5. When he judged Ananias and then later Sapira. Di ba? Naalala niyo yung kwento na ito, hindi na natin ito babasahin. Di ba sabi niya? Uh, at that time, di, di ba nagkaroon ng... Nagbibigay ng offering, ibinibigay sa Apostle Spit. Si Ananias Sapira, di ba? Nangopia din, ginawa din nila. Okay? O. Pero at the last part, tinanong siya ng ano? Nung... Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. So when Peter released that judgment, Ananias died. Okay? Jeremiah 1.10, God says, I see that, I see, see I have this day set over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. This is the word of God to I, to Jeremiah. I have this day set you over the nations. 
Jeremiah would be allowed to render judgment in the spirit that removed evil from the nations and kingdom. Same true with, kaya nga, pinagawa sa kanya ni Lord, you eat the scroll. Same true with John the Beloved. When he was in heaven, he was given a scroll at pinakain sa kanya scroll. When he was able to eat that, he was able to release what? Judgment or prophecy over nations. So he would also be allowed to render judgment that build and establish nations. So that this is one of our work in the New Testament is to become one of the judges of God in his court. So when judges take their place in the spirit realm, divine order can come into the natural. As judges in the realm of the spirit, we are setting things in order in agreement with God's justice. That's how we uh, work as a judge. We agree with him and whatever the decree of the, of the court, we release here on earth. So when we make some decree or uh, declaring the decree of God, what happens? We act as what? As a judge. 1 Corinthians 2.15, sabi niya, But he who is spiritual judges all things. See? The Lord wants us to judge. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Bakit? The word judge, judges and judge in a Greek, in Greek is anar, anakrino. It means to scrutinize, examine, and judge. So our work is what? To scrutinize, examine, and judge. It comes from the word krino, which means to, de to decide judicially. So clearly, we see that normal believers filled with the Spirit of God are able to judge. So people who judge in the spiritual realm will be critinized and scrutinized. Kasi yun ang sabi eh. This believer, however, will be justified by the Lord because they are judging from his spirit and heart. Sa anong condition? Sabi ng Matthew 7, 1 to 5, judge not. Oh, akala ko, judge not. Pero bakit sabi ni Paul? We can judge. Sabi pa nga ni Jesus, judge righteously. That you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your father's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look a plank in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your eye, from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. We are told that if we judge, we will be judged, right? However, if we investigate this scripture more closely, we find that it is not what is being said. Hindi tayo pinagbabawalang mag-judge. Ang sinasabi lang, Nang Biblia, we are being told that if there are areas of our life that are not in line with God and His Word, we should refrain from judging. Ibig sabihin, ayusin mo muna. So, alimbawa, you are accusing someone of stealing. E ikaw, naglanakaw din ng tithes. So, you cannot judge. Kasi ginagawa mo kasi yung bagay na ginajudge mo. Okay? So the admonition, however, is to get things right and correct so we can judge righteously. Kaya tayo sinasabihin ni Lord na do not judge because you will be judged. Ibig niyang sabihin ay we need to get things right and correct so we can judge righteously. So without righteous judgment, kasi there is no justice. So when there is no justice, Culture and society go off the rails, like Ecclesiastes 8.11, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set into them to do evil. So it shows that the lack of justice 
produces a chaotic state in a society. Nagkakagulo kapag walang justicia. So he was not saying that we should not judge. He was declaring that we should judge if things are not correct in our own lives. Kaya ang sinasabi niya, you correct first what is wrong in your life and then you can now judge. So if we judge without things spiritually lined up in our lives, and then we open ourselves to judgment. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. Kaya bago ka mag-judge, ayusin mo muna, making it sure na hindi mo ginagawa yung i-judge mo sa iba. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. Because the result can be this devastating to us. The enemy can what? Accuse us. Because the devil from his legal position or as our advice, adversary or anti dikos will present a case against us before the courts of heaven. Because like for example, unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness to one person, you know what happened? You are becoming an accuser like the devil. That's why ang rule, you cannot accuse someone. Or, or if you don't forgive, you become an accuser. So ayaw natin maging accuser katulad ni Satan. That's why ang sabi ni Lord, you should forgive from your heart. Okay? Because a lot of people, especially our loved ones, can make mistakes. Di ba? Can hurt our feelings. Oh. So when they hurt our feelings, what happens? We start to ano, harbor bitterness. And then if we harbor bitterness, what happens? Nagkakaroon tayo ng ano, unforgiveness. And that unforgiveness becomes what? The legal right of the enemy. This is because we have judged without first being judged or getting things set in order. So yun ang kailangan. You have to set things in order muna bago ka mag-judge. So the admonition is to judge ourselves first so we can then judge rightly. 1 Corinthians 11, 31-32 For if we would judge ourselves, we would, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the word. So it causes us to escape any and all condemnation which the world will suffer and also set us into place so we can render judgment without fear of being judged. So God needs us to be positioned as judges in the courts of heaven. Kailangan ni Lord ng mga judges sa court of heaven. But before you can do that, you need to be promoted first. Okay? So through prayers, decrees, and declarations, we will be able to see things shift in the spirit realm so they change and line up with God's passion in the natural realm. Like for example, the government. We want the government aligned with the government of God. So God needs more judges, His children, that can declare Diba? Or execute the judgments of God here on earth. Exodus 28. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother. For your glory and for beauty. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisan whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Nakita niyo ito? Gusto ni Lord na may garments ang mga pari. And then yung mga magdi-design, magtatahi ng anong yon, yung gifted artisan, sabi niya, it's all filled with the spirit of wisdom. That they make Aaron's garment to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. Tandaan natin, the purpose of God for us, kaya tayong naborn again, at gawin niya tayong ano, mga pari. Because sa Old Testament, ang pari po, 
ang sino mang Israelita hindi pwedeng mag-offer ng sacrifice or gifts to God unless there is a priest beside him. Kaya sa Old Testament priesthood, we call it the Levitical priesthood, hindi siya pwedeng, um, ano ba ang doon? Yung pare, kailangan may pare kasi hindi pwedeng, ang pare lang ang pwedeng lumapit sa Diyos. Mag-offer ng sacrifice. Remember, Saul, he offered a sacrifice, di man siya pare. He was rejected by God. Okay? So, in the New Testament, God changes the priesthood. May pare pa rin. Kaso lang tinawag na niyang ano, lib- uh, Melchizedek priesthood. Tapos, dito ang high priest natin sa Melchizedek priesthood, si Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, yung Levitical priesthood, ang high priest is Aaron and his tribe. Okay? So, sabi ni Lord, ito mga priest ko, dapat meron itong ano, damit. Okay? That they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him. That he may minister to me as a priest. So, ang gusto ni Lord is what? To minister to him as a priest. To offer a sacrifice. Yun ang trabaho ng priest. In the New Testament, priest tayo. Di ba? 1 Peter 2, 8 and 9, for you, are, for you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Still, the concept of priesthood hindi nawala sa New Testament. Di ba? Sa Old Testament, may altar. Moses, uh, God shown to Moses the altar in heaven. And an altar require a priest that will offer a sacrifice. Oh. So sa New Testament, may, may altar. They made us as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And He made us priest. Oh. And gali, sa, tayo rin ang sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Di ba? In the Old Testament, there are incense na sinusunog. Sa New Testament, may incense din. So Revelation chapter 8 are the prayers of the saints. So, and these are the garments which they shall breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and such shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his son, that he may minister to me as priest. Tandaan nyo, ha? Yung priest, mayroong turban. At ang trabaho nila ay magminister. Kaya sa New Testament, lahat tayo pare. At ang gusto, na, gusto ng Diyos sa atin ay ano, mag-offer tayo ng sacrifice kay Lord. Ano yung mga ino-offer sa New Testament? Hindi na dugo ng hayop, kundi ano? The sacrifice of praise, thanksgiving, sharing, and doing good. Yan yung ano, sakripisyo ng gusto ni Lord na dalhin natin sa Kanya. So these garments caused Aaron to be recognized in the spiritual realm and granted him a role. And what is role? He is what? A priest. So as New Testament believers, we are also kings and priests. So if you are a king in the kingdom of God and a priest, you are also a judge. Because a king does not only function as a king, but he is also function as judge. So we also have garments. We have been granted to wear in the spirit realm. Meron tayong damit na ibinibigay si Lord. And these garments gave us a place of authority and activity in that dimension. He will give you authority or power to operate in this court. So this is why Joshua a high priest was given new fresh garments to wear in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 3 to 7. Diba? So he was accused by the devil of wearing a dirty linen. Anong sabi ng angel of the Lord? The Lord rebuked thee, sabi ganun. 
And then sabi ni Lord, o palitan ng kanyang damit. Hmm. Because it allow him to function in the realm of the spirit as a judge. And sabi roon, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. So nakita nyo? Joshua was in the court. But he was not perfect. Di ba? Wearing a filthy garments. And he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. So hindi lang mag-isa siya doon. Di ba? Maraming ano, member ng council. And said to him, See, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich clothes. Rich robes, I mean. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So see, it's the, it's, it's the garments of a priest. May turban. Merong, tawag dyan? Garments. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my commandment, then you shall also judge my house. Nakita nyo? So there are uh, human beings that is still alive here on earth, human being, that is being called by God to operate as a judge in heaven. Hindi everybody, I believe hindi ito lahat. There are, if you become faithful, sabi ni Lord, ito ang requirements. If you walk in my ways, and you will keep my commandment, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. Mm. And I will give you places to walk among those, among these who stand here. O oh, see, may mga nakatayo din pala doon. May mga judges din palang nilagay doon ng Panginoon. So this was in the spirit dimension. He's a human being, a mortal man, but operates in a spirit dimension. His clothes granted him a functional place in a judicial realm of the spirit. The priest had judicial responsibility. Yun ang trabaho ng, ano, ng pari. In the courts of heaven, we can issue judgment, decrees, and decisions. If you are seated there. Okay? It is not for us to decide if we're going to sit there or not. It is the Lord of us will be the one that would invite you to sit there as a judge. Heaven needs God's people to take their place as judges in the realms of the Spirit. So when we occupy these places, our words of decree and declaration can cause things to shift. So that is the power of your declarations. Every time you speak, something happens in the natural. Things will move in the invisible realm so that which is visible can line up with godly order. Remember, the highest order of all the order in the creation of God is the Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek. So we can do this from the courts of heaven as those who have been granted the right to judge. Okay? I believe if he found you faithful in his court, God will give you a seat, authority to, to judge righteously. So, we need to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And this is our practice. As we master the courts of heaven, what will happen? Time will come, God is going to promote you. And God is to bring you into that realm of the Spirit where He will cause you to, to release judgment. Okay? So, yun ang next step ng ating uh, paggrow sa courts of heaven. Nag-start tayo as dependent. And then, we become petitioner. 
and the enemy becomes what? A dependent. Okay? And as you grow in the Lord and and bring people in the courts of heaven and make intercede, diba? Ang intercession, intercessor means what? Paracletus. To be helper. Oh. So every time you pray for someone, you are bringing a case into the courts of heaven. Now, a lot of people will will ask this question. Sabi nila, so ibig mong sabihin, Pastor, lahat ng prayer natin ay sa courts of heaven na lang. Hindi. Bakit? When you approach God as a, fi- as a friend, and He answered your prayer, you don't need to go to the judge. Sinagot na eh. You approach Him as a father. Sinagot na. So you don't need to go to Him anymore as a judge. But if you are keep praying for something, for someone, na walang sumasagot, walang nangyayari, something is wrong. Why? The enemy has a legal right against you or against that person or against dun sa hinihingi ng person na ito. So what you will do is you go to the court and ask for justice na i-release ni Lord laban doon sa injustices na ginawa sa atin. Remember, the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So, gusto ni Lord na tayo ay ano, pasaganain niya. Sabi niya, I wish above all things that you may prosper. Be in health as your soul prosper. Yun ang gusto ni Lord. Yung ating mga uh, uh, kaluluwa ay magano, uh, sumagana. Okay? And I believe our soul will not prosper if there are accusations against us. That's why sabi ni Lord, let us draw near to the throne of grace that you may find grace, that you may receive grace and find mercy, uh, that you may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Oh. So lahat tayo may pangangailangan. So ang sabi ni Lord, lumapit kayo sa akin and I will uh, meet your needs. Diba? So, yun ang kailangan nating uh, gawin. So, ngayong umaga, tayo po ay manalangin. Hilingin po natin sa Panginoon na ibuhos niya ang kanyang biyaya sa bawat isa sa atin upang ma- Ranasan natin yung pinapangako sa atin ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, salamat po sa biyaya na binigay niyo sa amin. And you called us to come into your court to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of our needs. Lord, equip us so that there will come a time you will call us to judge and sit in that bench, Lord, to be part of the judicial system of heaven. And Lord, that is your promise to your disciples. And I believe it is all for us. We can be uh, we can sit as a judge in the courts of heaven and release the righteous judgment of the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Salamat po, Ama, at pagpalaan niyo ang bawat isa sa amin sa umagang ito. As the start of the day, this Sunday, this week, haya mo, Ama, patuloy naming maranasan ang iyong pagmamahal sa aming buhay. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Tayo po ay magkaroon ng communion. Handa po natin yung ating mga communion elements.
received from the Lord what I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let us now partake the bread in the same way he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as open as you drink it in remembrance of me for as open as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the Lord death until he come Father we thank you and plead the blood of the Lamb in the courts of heaven for every accusation of the enemy against us we are agree with him and we confess whatever sin is throwing against us or accusing us we believe Lord that if we confess our sin you are just and faithful to us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness Lord as we partake this communion allow us to understand your plan and your purpose the calling that that we have before you. we thank you lord jesus amen amen let us now partake the juice
Okay, okay so... Uh, reminder lang, pag magpapadala po, kay, magpapadala po kay sa Palawan, please message me yung ano, text me yung sender at saka yung name. Actually, may nagpadala nga sa akin. Hanggang ngayon, hindi ko pa ma-withdraw. Kasi hindi ko alam kung sino yung nagpadala. Okay. So... Let us pray. Father, I just release blessing to each one because we already been blessed. And the reason we are bringing our tithes and offering to you is because we are a priest. And as a priest, when we give our tithes and offering, we receive bread and wine. And thank you, Lord, for the revelation of the wine that talks about the Spirit of God, the bread, the Word of God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for bringing us into this understanding. Lord, maraming salamat po. We are already blessed. That's why we can give because we are already blessed. Salamat po, Ama. Continue. Shalom. Shalom means nothing missing nothing broken we thank you and we bless you father in jesus name amen and amen okay uh yung iba po pasok sa Even though nag-send ako ng link, sometimes kasi po ang Zoom, kinakailangan yung link na pinadala ko sometimes hindi nag-work. So, you have to do it manually. You type the, ano, the uh, uh, Zoom ID and then you type the passcode. Okay. So, ang ating ano, uh, Zoom ID, actually, nabago na po ito eh. Okay, so, 776-386-1775. Tapos, yung passcode niya is Sunday1234. Okay, or you can use yung isang passcode, pwede din po yun. Or sometimes, kung hindi kayo makapasok, Ang gawin nyo lang ho, i-reset nyo lang ho yung inyong phone o yung laptop nyo. Kasi madalas uh, nagko-conflict sa, ano, sa operating system. So you have to, you know, uh, reset it. Okay, yun lang naman po ang gagawin nyo. Okay, so sa ating pong um, announcement before we had our closing prayer. So, ay, sorry. Okay, so yung, uh, yung ating kape, if you want to try, try this coffee, Fitrim coffee, uh, 10 sachet is 299 So if you buy three boxes, ay libre na ang uh, shipping. So just uh, look at sa Shopee po, yung Fitrim or Nuta Green, and then you will have your... Uh, you can order. Try this one. Okay? It's good for diabetic kasi ang kanyang uh, sugar na ginamit ay natural or stevia. Okay. So, see you next week kasi I we will be talking about again about the courts of heaven and the process of how are we going to master the court of heaven so 
kailangan lang po natin i-practice araw-araw yung ating pong pag-submit ng petition doon sa ating Ama sa Langit. Okay? So, maraming salamat po sa ating po mga nasa Facebook, Sister Aurora, Herrera Family, Jess, Sister Mimi Chua, Brother Big, Sister yung iba pa na and then uh, we have uh, teka po sa ating pong uh, Facebook Live Sister Irene Sister Gia Sister Gailani from Iloilo Sister Celia J. Hazel, Herrera, Franz, Jonathan Asio, Pastor Jonathan, uh, Sister Nightsidein, Carol Vallejo, Carol Abendano, Sinaida Diaz, uh, Olga Uy, uh, Celia Elemia, Sister Shirley Santos, Pastor Opi, Sister Janet Prohimo Okay, so yung ibang hindi ko nabanggit Pakishare na lang po yung, yung link ng video Para mas marami pa makapanood Kasi yung inyong mga Tawag dito Mga kakilala Ay hindi ko lamang kakilala So it's good that you can share the, the link Para they can also watch If they are available They can even watch it Even uh, Hindi ho live. They can watch the, the video. Okay, so let's thank the Lord today and let's close in prayer. Let us pray. Father, as we end this program, we want to give honor to you. Thank you, Abba, for all the marvelous things you have done today. Thank you for your love that you have revealed to us and for the love that we share together as your body. May you bless each person who took the time to gather here today and let your hand of protection be on them throughout the rest of the week. Let the work done here come to fruition, and let it all be done for your glory. Bless each of us and keep us safe until we are able to gather together again. We pray for all the words that you sown into our hearts this day. Watch over them. Protect them. May they take route and produce wonderful things, things of beauty and great blessings to And as we leave this place now, thank you that you walk with us. May we be alert to your promptings and live in your endless love. For yours is the kingdom and glory. In this age and forevermore. Amen. Okay, God bless you, Paul. Okay.